hi every, everyone who's joining now. We'd love if um, you could participate and, and put in the chat, um, when's the last time you had fun at work? Um, just what were you doing? Um, were you by yourself with your other people? And um, yeah, just how did it make you feel? Did you want to actually do some work? <laughs> Be productive? Um, just share, share, your, share your thoughts in the chat. When was the last time you had fun at work? And it could be a small moment. Bob Ross painting class, that's amazing. Oh, that sounds fantastic. That's so fun. Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Huh, Connie, what, what's an online scavenger hunt? Like what, what would be a prompt from that? That sounds cool. Um, so just getting people to go find something that's yellow or something that means something special to them. Could be anything. Cool. I love that. And then they have to come back and show it to everybody. Yeah, they, there were some really good ones on Zoom during like a lockdown time. Like I did one with um, my husband's family kind of scattered across the country. And yeah, it was like, okay, you've got 30 seconds, go find the weirdest object in your house. And we would run off and like come back with this object. It was actually, it was surprisingly fun. Like we did it, I think two separate times with different groups of people. I love that. That sounds cool. By the way, for anyone who was here for the past couple of weeks, I've, uh, my husband and I have been trying out our playful questions. So my husband was at a, a legal dinner last night and was asking people what the last internet rabbit hole was that they went down and I just tried oh, that. Oh, cool. Yeah, I tried it on my physical therapist this morning. But apparently last night um, when my husband asked it, the guy was like, that's a good question. How about you? <laughs> Without <laughs> asking it himself. And it was like, wait, no, no. You're supposed to answer it too. <laughs> that, that, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes me so happy. That, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's get started. Um, as people continue to file in. Let's do this. This is so fun, but keep uh, keep putting the last time you had fun at work in a chat. This is really great stuff. Um, I love starting this way. Don't feel um, bad if your answer is I never have fun at work. That's what we're, we're trying to help with. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, Casey, that's a good question. What creature would you least want to be granted a pair of wings? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, what do I not want flying around my face? Um, I love that. Uh, okay, let's jump into this. So, by the way, thank you Kath for sharing all these answers. It's fantastic. Yes, Catherine, why don't you why don't you set us up for our final fun intervention? Hello, sorry, I'm busy reading the chat. So, um, hi, I'm Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> I have had a lot of coffee this morning, and I went to physical therapy, so I'm a little bit hyper. Um, so I'm really <laughs> to welcome you all. <laughs> Our fourth and final intervention call, a little bit uh, wilder than normal because we don't have a carefully crafted down to the minute interactive experience in the same way. We're going to actually um, do some review and also open it up for questions and give you a chance to also learn more about uh, Paul and Devin and Fundamentum Lab. So mostly I just wanna thank everybody who's been with us for these four weeks. It's really been very inspiring to me personally and really nice to see that there's real people out there on the other side of my mailing list and also on the other side of the books because it could just be so isolating to be a writer. So mostly I just want to thank you and I hope that it's been enjoyable and useful so far and that you get something out of today as well. So welcome. Yes, and if this is your first time coming, um, this is a great time to be here because you're going to get a quick hit on everything we've done in the last month. You'll get up to speed real fast. All yeah. right. And I, I, I just want to Said, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming today's and it's been fun over the last four weeks like getting to see some people who return and I feel I feel like I'm getting to know you so uh some of you so thank you and it's a really um nice little community that Catherine has set up here so I want to thank I also want to just take a moment and thank Catherine for uh sort of um getting people interested in this topic and um yeah, thanks for, for putting a lot in, Catherine. It's meant a lot to a lot of people. So just want to say that. Means All right. Okay. <laughs> um, Corinne, that is an amazing question. We're going to do questions in a little bit. So definitely resubmit that question um, so it comes back into the chat when, when the time is right, because I love that question. All right. Paul, why don't you get, bring us through the rules? Okay. 
ground rules. Um, uh, everyone on here is a is a. We're under the assumption everyone's a grown up. So uh, get up when you need to if you have to take care of something. Um, next up, uh, please uh, lock your phone away. Uh, Catherine's written a, another book about this. So just uh, take some time to uh, just take these uh, 55 minutes and, and see if you can put your phone away and, and be present for, for this and, and be able to take it in. Uh, next up, uh, this is being recorded and posted. So just to let you know, especially this is the summary one. So we're gonna be recording stuff. Um, there will be times when you go into a breakout room that will not be recorded. So any of that action, anything you have going on there that won't be recorded and that, that will just be amongst you, you, you fun friends. Um, next up, um, turn off your inner critic. As we've always said, this is really one of the harder things to do. It's a big challenge. Um, you know, we, we tend to always focus that we're judgmental of other people, but the hardest thing is we're judgmental of ourselves. So, and that gets in the way of us being able to connect and play and have fun. So the, the better you can do that, the better. And lastly, don't be a fart face. As we keep saying, I let you know when you're, you know when you're doing it. And I will let all of you define <laughs> that for yourselves when you are a fart face. <laughs> so, uh, all right. moving on. All right. So the way that today is going to work is we're going to go through some structured review where there's sort of two big key concepts we've been working on throughout the month. Uh, I'm going to just do quick hits on like some of the stories, some of the exercises and tools, uh, just kind of name checking them. And then we're going to ask you, hey, when have you put any of this into practice either this month or other examples you've seen in your life of this working well? Uh, we're going to do that twice. And then we're going to come and we're going to talk a little bit more about Fundamentum Labs and what Paul and I actually do. Uh, there's going to be a moment to ask Catherine and Paul and I questions. And then we're going to end on a final um, a final exercise, which should be fun. And then we'll end at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And then there'll be another 15 or 20 minutes of sort of post game uh, where it'll be more informal to ask Catherine and Paul questions. Um, I have to go, unfortunately, sadly. Uh, also, I just want to shout out um, the people that have been here for all four of them. Um, uh, shout out Rosalind and AC and I'm sure a lot of other people. Um, so I really appreciate you being here. It's been so fun to get to know some of you. Um, so the first key concept review is just playing with ideas before picking. And this is a very simple concept, but it's actually it can be um, a little counterintuitive. I think a lot of us make it far in our careers because we've been uh, groomed to get to find a problem and get to the solution quickly. And there's definitely a time and place for that. But especially when we get into knowledge work, we get some more creative endeavors um, that can lead us to some safe and narrow thinking. So really, if we take that moment to take a step back and just play with our ideas a little bit, we can surprise ourselves and widen our options and then ultimately pick something which is more effective. And that's the point here. We're not saying bring fun into work just for frivolous reasons. It's to be more effective. Also, Catherine and Paul, I'm not gonna be watching chat. So if there's something um, that I should know, just call it out for me. Um, so first story that we pulled up in week one is just about Tiger Woods. And there's this narrative about him that, well, from an early age, he was obsessively focused on golf and was just grinding and grinding and grinding. And that's how he became one of the greatest golfers of all time. But really, the true secret to his success is he always found a way to bring play through every step of his career, whether it's at Stanford or instead of just working on his straightforward driving range uh, drive, he would like curve the balls over apartment buildings and, you know, saying shooting regular shots is boring or his Nike commercial where he was just on set, just bouncing a ball on a, on a putter for like 50 times. And they were like, let's throw out what our commercial is and just do that. He to his success has been finding a way to play. Um, another story that we talked about was uh, a study of artists where they gave them a bunch of objects to manipulate and then they gave them an hour to draw those objects. And they said, and they found that they kind of separated into two different categories of, of artists. One were the people that chose the objects, whether it was like a guitar and a vase, flowers, and then they chose those objects quickly. And then they spent most of their hour carefully drawing. And then the other type was the mind changers that chose their objects, 
uh, did some sketches for 20 minutes, threw out those objects, tried different objects, moved them around, and then hurriedly finished their sketch at the very end. And the point here is that the mind changers ended up having more creative work. And six years later, were the artists that were actually successful in New York City art galleries. And so the point here is that um, spending more time to find your idea, to find what you're trying to create before you jump into doing it leads to better work. Um, and then just some of the tools we've gone on. Uh, the first one is Worst First. It's the first tool that we gave you in the very beginning. And it's sort of like the entry point to everything, which is essentially, we always feel the pressure to do things good, just flip it around and start bad. Um, and when you start bad, you open up and you have, um, you give yourself some psychological safety to explore. And you oftentimes end up surprising yourself with something you find interesting. And then you take that strand and turn it into an idea that you kind of like. Um, and so the next one. I, I, oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Can, can I just jump in on it? This is of sort of like when we, talk, when we talk about turning off your inner critic, we understand how difficult that is. And this is like a, just a tool to help you do that to just disrupt that all that judgment and criticism and insecurity you might have and just use an exercise that's set telling you, please think of the most horrible ideas, <laughs> um, gives you that safety to then not be judgmental of yourself. Yes, um, that's right. So just wanted to be like highlight this, this really helps with, with that when it's, it's easier to say, turn off your inner critic, um, but we hope we, you can use this as a tool to do that. Yes. And also it gives you some clay to play with. All of a sudden you have a list of things that you can pull out interesting connections from. But the next thing is just what would Oprah do? And so uh, there's a just a proven, Oprah's just a stand-in, but she's a very memorable name. But it's just what would somebody famous or a specific kind of personality do that's not you? And when you try on that new hat and think of solutions as if you were them, you access different parts of your brain. And again, it gives you permission to think of ideas that you might not normally. Um, and then the third one is mind mapping. So this is taking a piece of paper, putting a circle with your challenge in it, and then just letting your mind kind of wander and free associating bubbles and ideas, just any sparks that you have and creating sort of this visual map. And it's just another way to let your kind of subconscious and your mind play um, before you pick whatever your solution is and create it. Uh, this was just my example that I pulled out about how do I make the most amazing training case study for Fundmentum trainings? And so there's different bubbles you can see here, but one is like, oh, I have killer video testimonials from past clients. And then I think, okay, what companies have I worked for? Okay, Google, Amazon. It's like, okay, ESPN, maybe I do a sports center themed. And then this just keeps going and going and going. Um, and then for those that have been here- what, what Sorry, one, one thing about that. Again, all of these examples that Devin's providing, these are ones you can do on your own, personally, by yourself, um, but they also work um, when you're with other team members. So you can all take a mind map break. <laughs> like sometimes yes. maybe that's the way we're gonna collaborate is we're gonna go off and come back. And yes. like, as you see, that, that's a theme we've, we've kind of done quite a bit and may, maybe sort of haven't talked about, but like, when you're collaborating, it doesn't mean you're all yelling and talking at the same time. It means yes. you could be simultaneously working by yourself, but you've given each of yourselves that time to do an exercise like this and then come back and share what is my mind map look. And right. that's when builds can happen, when people can create other sparks. But um, I think that's um, a message we kind of want to get across is like collaborating isn't always just <laughs> loudest person speaking and all those things. So um, I've also seen mind maps work really well with a group of four to five people around a big whiteboard doing it collaboratively. So mm -hmm. any of those options really work well. Um, and uh, so this just gets to this, uh, this concept that if you've been into all four of these, you've seen this slide a few times now, <laughs> but it's really this like this pressure we put on our brains at work. It's like, hey, can you think of the perfect solution to your challenge? And our brain, my brain especially, is like, no way, that sounds hard. I'm just going to check my email and feel productive that way because it's simpler and faster or even worse, I'm just going to descend into my phone and not be productive at all. 
But it's really easy for our brain to get distracted when we're feeling that pressure to think of the perfect solution. But if we start with just a mini game, something that's a little more playful and fun, all of a sudden our brain's like, okay, yeah, I can do that. That's a dopamine hit that's tied to my goals. And so when we talk about these ways to play, especially at the beginning of something, it helps create dopamine around the task that we're trying to, to accomplish and making work fun harnesses that dopamine for progress rather than distraction. Um, and then uh, for week one, we came up with some ideas as a group to keep remote teams connected. So these were just some of the, the favorite ones. Uh, a weekly DJ, um, taking turns talking about the favorite places in your town, starting meetings with questions like, hey, is there a book you've read recently or a project you're working on outside of work? Um, someone was really excited about what would Oprah do and just say like, well, what if we ask what would like, you know, Nancy or Bob do on our team? Um, show and tell, pet showcase, someone got really uh, <laughs> ambitious and thought of a Patch Adam style wish fulfillment on birthdays. So like really going to the next level for your team members and virtual pub quiz. These were just some fun ways to um, keep remote teams connected. And the group was using these tools that, um, that we just did a review on. Okay, so that was a bunch of review. Uh, and I actually, just for time, I don't want any jump-ins right now. I just want to go to the audience share. So I want to ask- I feel muzzled. Go yes, on. yes, sorry. But um, were you inspired to try anything new throughout this month? Um, and even if this is your first time here, uh, or you've been here, but you've seen an example in other cases. Uh, when have you seen other good examples of playing with ideas before picking? And even if you shared in a, in a past fun intervention, you can share again. Um, so put them into chat. Uh, and if you want to share out loud, I'd love to raise your hand um, and hear you share out loud. Um, so either or, um, and as soon as someone raises their hand, I will call on you. Boom. Uh, is it Tamara or Tamara? Yeah, it's Tamara. Yep. Ooh, Thanks, got Kevin. It. Um, you totally inspired me and helped me overcome some hurdles last week with your play process pick. And I've been super overwhelmed by needing to create some content at work um, and needing it to be perfect and blah, blah, blah. And I had remembered that the last time I created content, it was on a walk to the park as I was listening to music. And so I just opened my, my Google app and I hit the the little um, microphone. And when I would get a thought, I would just dictate it into my phone. And um, it's a, just really, it was great. It's like walking through the snow and listening to music. And when I get a thought, I dictate it and it felt like a, a threefer. Oh, I love that so much. Also, I have a um, an app recommendation. There's this app called otter.ai, like otter the animal. Okay. And you can, you can do your voice memos and then it just auto transcribes it for you for oh, free. Sweet. It's so cool. That's so awesome. I love to hear that. Okay. Um, Thanks, Rosalind, go ahead. All right. So, so many things that I got out of this, but um, one was, um, I got like five. So like the time confetti is the best thing in the world because like you, Deb and I, I'm like, oh, let me do this other thing that's like not as annoying to me to feel productive, but not like eat the eat the frog or whatever and so the time confetti was one of my favorite uh tips but the, the other one as far as like engagement with my team because that's been a, kind of my challenge for that I came here with um I, I think somebody recommended one of the partners that I that I had in a breakout was like maybe you should bake when you go to work and so last week was Mardi Gras and so I baked Mardi Gras cookies and was like hey if anybody's in the office come get a Mardi Gras themed cookie. And um, this week I was interested. I'm like, I like to bake. So I was like, I guys, I think I'm just gonna do this every week because <laughs> I just like to bake. And so my team was like, we'll call it Fat Tuesday every Tuesday. And so now it's this thing that I do. I made chocolate chip cookies today, crispy ones. Um, but also the other piece that just randomly happened today that I'll share is that just the the, the multiplier effect of, of the effort. And I gotta show y'all this crazy cool thing. So. Because I made those Mardi Gras themed cookies, my producer literally is, he does pour painting and he made this amazing, he knows my favorite color is yellow. And he was like, I made this for you because Mardi Gras cookies and I gave them to him and his kids and all, you know, all of that. And so just what I, what I think is probably the biggest thing is just, it's such a multiplier because when you, when you do these things, 
it, it it gives other folks that 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 kind of the idea the spark to do so it's it's so cool to kind of see the 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 ripples of of the fun and all of that so it can kind of take a mind of its own when other people get a hold of it because I didn't even think about that and kind of incorporating that and so again I'm like bittersweet because I'm so I love this 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 whole month and so hate to hate that this is the last one but it's been so 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 helpful well we should say that one of the things we hope to do at the end of this call is figure out ways to keep the momentum going so keep that in mind but I love all that that's absolutely amazing I love the idea, I mean, I feel this way too, that once you start prioritizing fun and you share that energy with other people, it does start to snowball. And the thing with the baking, I remember because you were paired up with someone who loved cooking. I remember you were saying it was such a funny coincidence, but it reminds me of an example I may have brought up on these calls before when I did a keynote at this company that really did seem to prioritize fun. And one thing they did is they had an official budget for people at the company who wanted to be CEOs of something. So it was like the chief executive officer of coffee. And that person would have a budget to find the best coffee and like play barista kind of for the, the team. So when you're talking about baking every week, that's kind of like you becoming like the CEO of baking, like that's going to be your role. And like, that's something you kind of own and you bring people fun and joy through that. So thank you so much for sharing those. Ooh, I love that. And um, another key to fun and productivity at work is having some autonomy. And so that's like a way to make people feel some autonomy, like, oh, I'm the one that's in charge of the coffee. So that's cool. Um, Anne, go ahead. Thanks. Um, one thing I was going to mention, it's not so much an activity, but um, that I've noticed, I'm a part of a small creative group that's in a larger, like not as creative <laughs> group of people. And um, one thing we've been finding is that sometimes rather than discussing an idea, just going ahead and making something that people can see. Um, people can get really caught up in like debating an idea endlessly before it's executed. But sometimes having a prototype of something, whatever you're working in, just seems to really help people get excited in a different way. And, um, and the other thing with that that I've been finding is that if I call something an experiment, people seem to really like we're just doing this as an experiment. <laughs> And if it doesn't work, we don't have to go back to it. But that seems to loosen folks up. Um, we've been finding a lot. Oh, so genius. It's like, I feel like, uh, yeah, that's, I love that. It's amazing. Um, Jess, go ahead. Hi, I was just going to say how much I enjoyed the research you shared last week about um, the people who had like a limited amount of time and um, the people who took the longest to sort of brainstorm and kind of um, go back to the drawing board before like solidifying things were the most successful. So I did that yesterday and um, and it and one of my supervisors came in and he was like, oh, you're sort of like waiting to the last minute for this project. And and like it just gave me some confidence of like oh no actually this is a best practice mm -hmm. <laughs> I, and it totally yes. worked and like i it was just like creative and i didn't feel um the pressure of like thinking i was being like a, a bad worker being waiting to the last minute because i was like no this is this is okay to that's right that's right it's funny john cleese um from monty python actually talks about this in some of his amazing creativity talks on YouTube, I highly recommend them, where he says, if I have until Tuesday to make the decision, I'm going to make it on Tuesday. And there's oftentimes a weakness you show where you just like that decision makes you uncomfortable that it's sitting on your head. So you just make it on Thursday the week before because you just have to be done with it. But in reality, give your mind that time to process, you know, play, process, play a little more process. You'll come up with something better. Um, uh, and, I love that. And, uh, Steve Steve Jobs had the same thing, which he 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 was his, maybe not as fun as Mr. Cleese, but his his he had the same thing. of saying <laughs> he, he his whole thing was the same issue of like I just don't know everything yet. Why should I make the decision now? Maybe something yeah. happens. <laughs> so. All right, I love this, uh, Casey. I'm gonna have you be the last share, and then uh, and then we're gonna uh, keep going because I got more. Sure. Um, so just kind of bouncing off, I think it was what Anne was talking about, making models. Um, one of the things that I've been doing lately is um, using Lego, having, um, so I work on climate change and trying to do that more playfully and having people engage with the topic, a pretty heavy topic more playfully. And we, um, 
I've ended up using Lego to do that. And people sort of create models around different questions that I have. Um, and it's, it's just a way of, you know, instead of, it, it engenders discussion, but it's also, um, they then have a tangible model to sort of talk through. Um, plus it's playful, right? I mean, people, people like playing with Lego. Um, and just a way, I think, to, to engage with the topic that's pretty serious in a way that, um, that's playful and keeps people sort of, um, I guess it, it's, it's a little less unassuming, right? And, and they're just able to, to engage with it um, in a different way than this real heavy doom and gloom that, that typically comes with climate change work. Oh my God, I love that. That is so smart. And there's a lot of things happening there. One is just something that feels so existentially like I can't do anything about it. Like you're just making it a little more concrete and also just like the playfulness. Like, yeah, I think that's really genius. I love that. Great work. Um, super smart. Uh, okay, keep heading up the chat with this, but uh, we are definitely um, behind time a little bit, so that's okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, the second concept that we really laddered up to was playful curiosity about others at work, especially, and what that can lead to and how that can unlock things. Um, so we referenced this um, study from the University of Virginia, which is that if you are looking at a hill, your brain perceives it as 20% steeper when by yourself compared to if a friend is standing next to you, even if the friend is like looking the other direction. It's just our perception of reality is transformed by the presence of others. Um, another thing that uh, we talked about was a different Stanford study where they gave participants this puzzle they had to work on. And then um, they came in five minutes later and said, oh, uh, Steve actually um, did this puzzle before you and he wanted to give you a tip. And then they give you the tip and all of a sudden you start working harder, you're trying more, you try to do the puzzle longer, even though Steve's tip had no useful information whatsoever. It's just the fact that we feel that somebody out there is connected to us and they care about us, it makes us more motivated. Because Steve didn't exist, it was just made up. Um, but that very fact makes you work harder. Um, and then just some of the, uh, the exercises we did is superpowers and magic wands. So if you're starting to work with somebody that's maybe outside your team or even in your team, just asking them, uh, what's the superpower in your personal life? And if you had a magic wand, what would you change about your role at work? And the key here is these are a little more playful than just asking, hey, what are your strengths or what's annoying about your job? And it's the same question, but when I get the superpower or magic wand question, it makes me want to engage with it more. Um, and then another thing we did was we said, hey, pair up with a stranger and connect the dots for them. So you just shared your superpowers and magic wands. How can your insight help them have some unlocks for themselves. And people came back and were like, oh my God, like I had some realizations. This person I just met all of a sudden saw me and gave me all of this interesting insight. And that is sitting there with our work colleagues um, if we choose to go the next mile and try to help. Um, and then there was just this idea of like thinking about our ideas as like a curious scientist or what I think Anne was saying, sorry if I got this wrong, was talking about, um, uh, couching things as an experiment is really helpful where um, if you have an idea that you're working on, go on a roadshow with it, like bring that to other people, maybe someone in a different department who's not a stakeholder at all, and just say, hey, I just want your feedback on this. Um, and you don't have to do anything they say, but you just want to get data from them and they will feel so um, connected and they will feel very um gracious or that's not the right word they'll be really happy that you ask them for their feedback even if you don't take well, the, anything they'll, they they'll, um, they'll, they'll, they'll feel like um this is an example of how to promote inclusivity they will feel included because you have made the first gesture of vulnerability of saying that's I'm right gonna, i want to show you something i want to show you something it's not perfect but i <laughs> i really want to get your advice and like, that's right. That is how, um, as I'm sure he'll hit on the, I'm not trying to steal your thunder, but that's how the oxytocin starts getting exchanged. How that powerful hormone of connection starts happening. And there we go. Sorry, Devin, I'll muzzle. You're fine. No, we're, we're, we're all good. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yes, it's like, we just talked about dopamine and play. 
oxytocin is also really powerful. It's been very uh, Im- amazing to me to see where intractable work problems, where people are just entrenched and it's never going to get solved. All of a sudden, if we start connecting a little bit more personally, it just gets solved. It's the weirdest thing. Um, but what oftentimes seems like intractable problems is just based on there not being enough of a relationship to really get to the deeper things that we need to get to. Um, and so this is that trust neurotransmitter, um, nourishes honesty, vulnerability, and collaboration. And it can be released a lot of ways, but shared laughter, storytelling, and playful questions um, are all good ways of doing that. And then as a group, we came up with some of these playful questions um, that you could ask people. Um, so there was like, what's the last internet rabbit hole you fell down? If we wiped your phone, what three apps would you keep? Um, where would you go with a one-way ticket? What's your favorite way to waste time? What's something blue on your desk and share it? Is a hot dog a sandwich? Why or why not? What was your favorite game as a child? These are all really great games or uh, questions that you can be asking and just give yourself some heart that this is not wasting time, that you are actually helping to get work done by asking some of these questions. And one of the best things people do is just so many times people come late to virtual meetings, just show up on time, share your screen with a single question. And for whoever comes for the first five minutes gets to talk about that question. People will start showing up on time. Um, so audience share, were you inspired to try anything new in this way? Or have you seen other examples of playful curiosity to connect with others? Um, and so uh, just like last time, would love any uh, hand raises um, or put in the chat. Um, and as we wait, I was going to say one of my favorite questions to ask, as you may have picked up on, is to just pay attention to how you feel both physically and emotionally, like before, during, and after you do something. And going to what you were saying about oxytocin, Devin, I think that, I mean, for me at least, my <laughs> today I'm caffeinated, as you all know, but like my feeling before these fund prevention calls and my feeling afterwards, there's a noticeable boost in my mood and a feeling of positive energy. And I am not a neuroscientist, but I'd be willing to bet that part of that is that we actually have been able to create a sense of closeness together, even though we're on a Zoom call, just by engaging with each other in this playful way. So just as a suggestion and an offering, like pay attention to how you actually feel when you do various things, um, because I think it's, it is a reflection of what hormones and what neurotransmitters are being released. It's very powerful. I love that. I love that. So just some stuff in the chat here. Um, and uh, raise your hand if you have anything to share out loud, but uh, I see AC saying, um, I ask playful questions almost daily. I even like to use them in Zoom with new connections. I think that's great. Um, and then uh, uh, Tamara saying, I'm hosting a staff social with the superpower magic wand to connect the dots idea around, is it possible to enjoy your job more? I love that. I'm so excited to see that. Um, Anne says, we livened up our all-day planning meeting, gave people paper bags with supplies like pipe cleaners and paper cups, and then gave them a theme related to the planning meeting, 10 minutes to make something and tell the group what it was. Silly words like the weirdest or funniest. Um, it's so great. And like, what's interesting about that, almost back to that Lego thing, is like, when you get people something to do with their hands and to make these like hard concepts tangible, um, it really can lead to some breakthroughs in how people think. And I'm seeing that comment getting some hearts. I love it. Um, and um, Jen is talking about, I use the polling features on social media to be the curious scientist um, on what I'm working on. I love that. Um, yes, Lisa, it's very useful for people you don't normally connect with. Um, this is great. Um, in the interest of time, I'm actually just going to keep going because <laughs> we are behind. So, um, but I really appreciate all of you and all of your energy here. And then, yes, this kind of ladders up to this concept of time confetti that I did put in the chat um, in response to a question. But our day is just broken up into so many of these bite-sized little chunks of time. And it can be really hard not to just waste that time. I'm guilty of it. Uh, and so two ways you can use 10 minutes, 30 minutes. It's just play with ideas really fast. That concept of play, process, pick is really helpful. You know, you can't nail your presentation in 30 minutes, but you can do a quick mind map or you can write out 20 bad ideas 
And then as you're going through your meetings the rest of your day, you've primed your brain and your subconscious is going to be doing some work for you. You come back to that presentation later, you're so much farther than if you didn't take that 10 minutes, honestly, to do that. And then playful curiosity about others. Um, you have a short little window. Just call up a, a friend or someone in another department and say, hey, do you got 10 minutes? Can I just run an idea by, by you? If they don't pick up, no problem. But it's a spontaneous, like, go for a walk and call somebody with your phone. I love, Kathy, that's something you talk about uh, in your books, which I love. It's like, hey, your phone can be used. It's just a phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've um, so, so I've heard. Yeah. So I've heard. <laughs> um, and so. Uh, but uh, what, 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 one, thing, one thing I want to jump in on that one too, Devin, is that um, I want people to feel confident to call people and to just remind you that most people like receiving a call and we can all get, we've all been trained to like not want to bother people or that the phone is like this big burden. In reality, if they recognize who they're getting a call from, they're going to take it. They're, <laughs> they want to talk to you. So that's just a, a thing we, um, uh, yeah, that's just, I want to always put that out there and that might be my own neuroses that I've gotten over but I wanted to share that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we've gotten some questions about Fundamentum Labs and Paul and I, and like, wait, who are you guys? So we just wanted to quickly uh, kind of talk about what we do and who we are. So Paul, why don't you give us a little bit of background on us? Oh, okay. Um, I will try to make this concise, but I'm not great at that. Um, I started my life and my career uh, working in sketch and improv comedy while also during uh, while also doing advertising at the same time. And then in uh, about eight years ago or 10 years ago, geez, I started a company called uh, Funworks, which is the precursor to Funmentum Labs. And that was to blend my sketch comedy and my advertising world together. And because I always thought the sketch comedy world generated ideas at a faster pace and a more enjoyable one. <laughs> it was actually fun and there was lots of laughs and positivity. And I just saw that that led to um, this kind of amazing productivity and ideas. And so I took that to an ad agency where we started using um, collaborating with our clients and using play and fun. Um, and then over time, we started researching and reading books like Catherine's book and realizing, oh, this is actually, <laughs> there's actually science behind all of this. And uh, over time, um, we've created, we've spun off into Funmentum Labs, which is really dedicated to um, productive play. And that's everything we do. We want, it's not about making ads. It's not about that. It's about helping people with productive play. And we do that in three different ways. Um, there is the way the idea sprints. And that's sort of what we were doing in the advertising world, which was how to use play to help people generate ideas, the kind of brainstorming approach, but really digging into a lot of some of the exercises we've done here to help people um, get unstuck in a quick amount of time. And so that aligns group fast around breakthrough ideas. Um, so that that's, and then the next thing is training. This is sort of what happened was as we were doing this for clients doing the idea sprints, a lot of people had the sensation of like, how do we always work like this? <laughs> I don't want you to go away. Um, I really enjoy this. And there was an opportunity to help um, organizations understand how they can use these tools with each other, um, particularly leadership and on down, how they work with their teams and how, again, as Catherine writes, how um, this state of fun and play is a uh, human necessity and that that's something that people understand, but they don't have the tools to activate it. And that's what we do. We, we actually teach people what we call fun mentum. <laughs> um, and then uh, lastly, the newest thing that um, AC had a little sneak preview of this week, that's why she reached out to me, was... Uh, Funware Ideator. So this is actual software that we're using to help people use some of these tools like Worst First or What Would Oprah Do in a software format so that they can collaborate remotely or in a hybrid state and giving them structure 
to uh, generate ideas or connect um, remotely. And we see this as something that's an ongoing challenge. Oh, thanks, AC. <laughs> thanks. Um, and um, we're really excited about this and this is rolling out and um, we're demoing it. And, and it's, been, uh, it's been really cool to see that it still works, that at the core of it, people still want to engage and play and um, connect. And that productive play really helps with all of that. So that's what Fundamentum Labs is all about. That's what we're doing as a company. Um, and these, uh, and we're trying to help. Um, the whole point was Catherine was like, you know, I think this keeps coming up. I want my fun life to integrate with my work life. And I, that's the whole thing. I was like, yeah, no, it can happen. It works. You can totally do that. And right. that's what our company is committed to. And fun at work doesn't need to be separate from productivity. It's like the real unlock for me. I'm like, oh, there's ways to play and have fun that are actually help you with your goals. Um, so uh, in the interest of time, uh, we were uh, going to take some, some audience questions, but um, I'm going to save that for the post game. And we're definitely going to take audience questions then for uh, Fundamentum Labs or for Catherine. But I really do want to get to this final um, moment together. And so... Um, I'm just going to jump to this, which is that, um, hey, February is done. Our four sessions are over. However many you came to, even if today is your first session, um, you got a pretty good uh, interactive review of what we've gone over. So now I want you on your own to take a couple minutes and just imagine that you have this group of people from all across the world that are excited to keep this momentum going, aka yourselves. And... <laughs> I just want you to think of some ways that we could harness this group energy to keep bringing productive plan to work. And don't worry about feasibility. So just as some thought starters, what would get you excited to participate? Just you personally. Also, like, I'm so amazed by all these different diverse backgrounds and, and industries and jobs that we all have and parts of the world. Are there ways we could harness that? A um, couple tools. Uh, can you start with just bad ideas? And how might a celebrity uh, do it? So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to give you uh, two minutes. Just write whatever ideas you can on your own. And then we're going to be put into a breakout room. Uh, and we're just going to quickly compare ideas with others. Uh, and then we're going to um, quickly fill out a final idea and then present it. Um, whoever wants to present theirs will get entered into a fun little competition. And then that will be that. Does anybody have any questions about this? So you mean in general, Devin, like bringing productive play into work in general? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, I'm going to play some music. You got a couple minutes uh, and then we're going to go. All right. Just a quick two minutes right there. Um, and then we're just going to go into breakout rooms and just quickly introduce yourself and just share any idea you have for harnessing this group energy to bring productive plan to work. And I'm putting a doc into chat. So uh, open up that doc. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to find your handout, and I'll show you how in a second. And you're going to create a headline, a key image, and a description for one idea. So everybody's going to share one idea. As a group, you pick one, you mock it up, and then we're going to come back and share. It's going to be real fast. You're going to have about like seven, eight minutes to do this. So don't think too hard. Just jump into it and pick one. Um, so here's how this looks like. So this is what the handout looks like. And, you know, you can see there's the headline of the idea, there's an image and a description. This example idea is like, hey, what if we got together and did walk and talk pen pals, where every week we met up virtually, there was a single prompt on screen that made us reflect about productive play at work. And then we paired up with someone across the world, did a quick walk and talk, talked about it, came back and had a discussion about it. That's just an example. Um, and so when you get into your room, you're going to see it's going to say breakout room two, breakout room seven. So that'll be your corresponding handout link. Um, so in that link I sent you, uh, you'll find whatever number it is that corresponds. Um, and don't worry um, if things don't go exactly as planned. This is all just here for fun. <laughs> so <laughs> next level uh, <laughs> breakout. So like, we're going to, I'm excited, but <laughs> So, you know what, it's, it's, it's all good. This is a uh, low pressure is how I would see this. Um, and just have some fun. There'll be about three or four people in your room. 
Any final questions? Yes, exactly. Pick one idea, only one idea from your room. Share some ideas, pick one, mock it up real fast, and then we're going to come back. But then do share all that right. other idea in the chat because I want to hear all of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Catherine's like, all of them shall be mine. <laughs> okay, I'm going to open the rooms. You've got okay. about, um, got about uh, seven, eight minutes. So real fast, just jump into it and go. Have fun, everyone. See you soon. Have a good time. Okay. So I would love to know um, if anybody would like to share their idea. Um, and uh, if you'd like to share yours, go ahead and uh, raise your hand. Um, and then Catherine's going to share her screen. Um, and we're going we're gonna to check out what your idea was. All right. Uh, Suzanne, go ahead. And uh, when, what group number were you? So we were group three. Okay. And um, we came up with a Funspiration share. And we thought that one of the powerful things that came away from this group and this community was really the idea sharing that we were able to do and it would spark other ideas. And so we thought that by creating some sort of private community, whether LinkedIn, Facebook, or the like, with a slide or a post template where people could share their funspiration. What was the issue that you were trying to solve? What did you do? And what was the outcome? In like three to six simple sentences, and then to follow up with a periodic call where we could highlight a few of the examples and dig a little deeper if people wanted to. But that sort of sharing the ideation as it comes so people can then build on it, we thought that would be a good way to keep momentum going. Love it. Love it. All right, Sarah, go ahead. What is your, um, yeah. Thanks. It was what, what group number nine. Okay. Group number nine. And, <laughs> and we thought of the idea of just getting together to play and for no reason. So to to agree on a time, weekly, bi-week, weekly, monthly, et cetera. And on every occasion, someone from, from the group would bring uh, ideas that we could play together, either as a big group or in small breakout groups. And obviously awesome. this hide and seek is, uh, is, I mean, it could be done obviously virtually, but that's, but something like that, just to play, yeah, for no reason, just for the fun, just for the play. I love it. All right, Catherine, go ahead. What group number are you? Pod number seven. And one of the things we talked about um, was just feeling included from the beginning, mm. like what would keep people. And so then one of the things that we landed on um was that we introduce ourselves and share a why like why are we here like what's inspiring us to be here I always find that level when I used to lead groups and ask people kind of why they're joining or what's their passions um I'm in corporate well-being so always great to dig in a little to be like well why are you here and then people have a little bit more investment and you get to know everybody a little bit better so I find that to be like a really big hook Love that. Awesome. All right. Uh, Tamara, go ahead. Uh, we had a super similar idea, and I think we're on that slide right now. Group number six is um, a monthly okay. online meetup that would alternate. Oh, I'm sorry. This is group six. I'm so sorry. This is seven. That's okay. That's I'm okay. At... Yeah, yeah. This All was right. the one before. All right. Let's uh, I'll take in number seven for a second because that's a beautiful image. I don't oh, know. We'll leave this up. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Um, Anyway, uh, our idea was similar monthly online meetup and it would alternate. One month would be an open space idea share like it's been talked about. Um, and the next month it would be sort of that fun play practice space where people sign up for a five to 10 minute um, chunk of time and they either test an idea or share an idea that has worked in a different space. Love that, love that. All right, Rosalind and JD. All right, we are group number five, and we had a lot of ideas, but the one that we settled on, I believe, Is we're going right? to say, we said we'll do, um, Wait. Is yeah, that right? Five. Or is it group five. It, says, it groups, it says group four up there. Is this, um, uh, is this right? <laughs> Amy B, that might be, 
hours was, well, I just tell y'all because I got confused. Uh, we chose a fun con, so like Comic Con. So it would be like a hybrid event of like virtual or in person, where and or in person where we kind of talk about because to us, I think one of the challenges we we think we would face is how do we we all actually have jobs and we all have obligations and we have responsibilities and so you know, after after we disperse, it's going to be difficult to kind of bake stuff in. So like, is there an opportunity to keep that going and kind of refresh, like, oh, like, let's kind of refresh, let's have fun con and kind of see like what's going on and kind of not kind of resting on our laurels and kind of keeping that at the forefront of our minds. And um, just to, we coupled that with like, whatever we do, we would like to gamify it. So like any any way to like, again, how do we make sure we do it? And it's not gonna, if it feels like a chore, we're not gonna do it. So if there's a way to gamify um, participation, whether it's in a LinkedIn group or something, um, that would probably be good as well. Awesome. All right, JD, last one. Great. Um, we were group 10. Let me see and if the numbers are off. So I'm having trouble getting group 10. I, I think it actually is slide 10 right there, is right? One, okay, great, great. Yeah, so that's us. So. Um, there's the idea of like a Slack or a Discord channel, sort of less focus on the larger social media ecology and just like a more closed group. And then keeping the momentum going with like questions that maybe something people could react to quite quickly, like, a, you know, like a question or maybe a prompt to the group. And then people respond like kind of like a piling on with ideas. And then maybe somebody curates those into like a list and then it can nice. turn into like an emojis, vote with emojis. What do you think of these ideas? And then that way you all or we all could get a sense of, oh, yeah, these are really resonating for the group. So that's like the top idea for the group, that kind of oh. thing. So we could get quick ideas and just keep things like evolving that way. You get bonus I, points for getting the image of the Slack, like you generated. <laughs> well, that was the affordance you all had, you know, with the find an image. We just guessed. <laughs> I <laughs> love great. this so much. All right, everybody. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send out this survey link here. And I just want everybody to very quickly vote on what your favorite is out of all of these. Um, and then we'll show the winner. Just one? Uh, just one. Just, just, one. Choose, just choose your favorite. Whichever one is your absolute favorite. Um, the at can all, all be winners. <laughs> um, and uh, apologies if I didn't get one of them right, but uh, everybody just throw that in. Um, and um, I sorry, I'm seeing responses coming in. And here we go. All right, everybody got another another like 15, 20 seconds or so. Um like it's it's choosing children, isn't it? Like yeah, children. That's right. It's not not easy, <laughs> is it? Um all right, and I'm gonna give everybody one more, five more seconds. Oh, it's getting close here. Um okay, and I'm gonna say that's time. And the winner is getting together to play together. Um, ah. Congratulations. And then um, a lot of them got lots of votes. There's monthly online meetup and digital closed community. A lot, a lot of a lot of really great votes. So really amazing work, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was All awesome. Right. I know Devin has to run because he's running another meeting. And uh, oh, I'm, I'm the host now. Guys, he gave me powers. I just became the host. So thank you, Devin. And we're, we'll thank stick you, everyone. Thanks, Devin. Devin. Um, and everybody here, I mean, we're officially obviously over time, but Paul and I can stick around here for a little bit. Um, yes, so thank you, first of all, for being here, for being a part of this. It's been an amazing experience from my side as well. I wanted to touch on one point that I thought before we open it up to general questions. So if you've got a question, just think on it and we'll start to answer questions. But one point that I've been thinking about for this past month, and I'd be interested, Paul, in your thoughts on this as well, is that when we say, how do we have fun at work? I think a lot of mm. times we think about fun and work, like fun as being something that we do kind of separately from work. And so sometimes when I give talks or talk to companies about like what they're doing for fun related events. It'll be like, well, we're doing our normal everyday thing, but then on the side, we're going to have like a board game room or we're going to have like, you know, the 
the stereotypical tech like pickleball court or like some kind of like like a ping pong table, which I think has some use. But one thing I've been reflecting on a lot this month is that, Paul, I think one of the things you guys do so beautifully is that it's like using fun in two different ways. So you're actually using this playfulness in the work context, right? So it's not separate. It's actually like we're bringing playfulness into the way that we are working together. And that actually leads to productivity, which is an interesting, I mean, as you've said numerous times, interesting byproduct of actually enjoying yourself, you know, far from being frivolous. If you can have that fun in the moment with your colleagues, you actually end up being more productive. But then you also have fun. So I don't know if this like nuance is as uh, mind blowing to anyone else on this call as it was for me, but I thought it was really interesting how having fun at work can be bringing more playfulness into the work itself. And then that results in productivity. It's like, I don't know, there's like two angles here. I'm not really articulating it very well, but I thought that well, was- No, 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 it's Yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's a thing I think we all kind of have intuitively experienced at some point in our careers. And that's what's so maddening is at some point we have had that moment <laughs> and we're like, why don't we always do that? And, and in fact, we're sort of disappointed that 85% of the rest of work is not like that or 95, whatever it is. And I think what happened for me was um, it has to be part of the work because I think you and I have talked about this, Catherine, is really at work, we're ideally as a worker, and as an employer, we want our employees ultimately to get to flow, right? Which is that peak state of peak performance. And that happens with each other as well. And what we started realizing is that play and fun as individuals helps us get into flow. As a group helps us get into flow. And that's where the real productivity comes from. Like that's what you're hitting on, Catherine. If we can really play and fun are really tools that we know that help people get into that flow state, which we talked about, which is, um, oh, that's great. Thanks, AC. Yeah. And that flow is that moment of time when we're very present in what we're doing and we're really engaged and we're enjoying what we're doing. And we have those moments. And what happens is the older we get, the harder it is to access that moment. Um, yeah, I think that, that AC actually put this really well when you said, um, if you work playfully, you don't need any forced fun. The connection and product productivity just happen, which I think is really important to keep in mind. And it actually makes me think, I mean, as you guys know, like the definition I put forth in my book of fun is that it's playfulness, connection, and flow. So instead of, I mean, maybe get the ping pong table, I don't know, but instead of focusing on that, like, I think what we've been doing in these workshops is how do you build more playfulness and connection and flow into your work interactions and the way you approach work and you will end up enjoying it more. It will become more fun. And then the wonderful byproduct of that is that you will end up being a lot more productive, but you're not aiming. I think it's interesting to think that you're not aiming directly at either of those things. You're not like, we're gonna have more fun. And you're also not like, we're gonna be more productive because both of those are not gonna work. So I, to me, that's one of the like, most powerful aspects of this that I'm personally taking away from the workshops. That's, if people that's, a, great, reading, that's a great point, Catherine. It's kind of it's kind of your point, Paul. But <laughs> if anyone wants to raise their hand and say anything out mm -hmm. loud, you're welcome to. Um, I'm really enjoying the chat as well. It's true. It's, it depends on how you use the ping pong table. I su <laughs> I suggest a Lego community table instead. Okay. Well, uh, and, Ross, and, and, and oh, go ahead, Paul. And in fact, AC's bringing up a really good point about um, thanks, Amy. Um, uh, that there are all these great tools that we we have at work, whether they're remote or not. And um, I had a client tell me this in the pandemic and he's, he said, he was just really great. He said, if we're not creative or playful in how we use these tools, then the tools themselves will, will cease being effective. It will become as ineffective as every other boring piece of thing that we have at work as the, like, the conference room that we look for answers. Like, well, we're in a conference room, so now I guess we should have all the answers and that's not how it works. Um, how do you use that room? How do you reimagine it? Um, that's the key. So anyway. Well, Rosalind. Okay, I'm gonna jump on the AC train because like that what she said. Like, I can't see the chat. So I'm like, 
it sounds riveting. I'll say that it sounds like it's a lot of good stuff going on in chat that I'm missing. But um, what I was gonna say is kind of um, similar to uh, kind of when we started about the superpowers and like what you what you would change. I know just I'll say like two things I had I've been doing for my team um, that I found extremely helpful to keep that fun. Like it's just, like you gotta bake it in. So like with my team, I always ask them like, hey, like what work energizes you and what work drains you and I make it my responsibility to go like, I want at least 75% of the work you do to be work that energizes you. My goal is 80, but hey, I'm not perfect. But like, if, if, if you can just give me, you know, 25% of stuff that drains you, because we all have to do some stuff that drains us. But like, my promise to you is that most of the things you do will energize you. And I found that that, to your point, like, I know that I'm trying to make sure you can get into flow. I'm going to try to facilitate that as best as I can. Like, what can I take off your plate so that you're doing work that energizes you? And then um, I also do an event called the Thursday Turndown, where the only rule is we don't talk about work and someone hosts it and it's whatever they consider fun. So I don't care what it is. If you want us to just take a walk, if you want us to uh, play a game, like whatever it is, whatever is fun to you. And it gives them that like, and it's, uh, it's been so much fun to just see what other people think is fun. Like, I don't want to define it for, for anybody. And it's been so nice to like, go like, oh, this is what you consider fun. Okay, cool. Like we're down. It's only 30 minutes. So it doesn't, you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't take anything off of us. So those are kind of things that I do with my internal team anyway. What are some examples? I love that. Like, what are some examples of things people have gotten you to try? Because it sounds oh. very like yes and to use an improv thing where you're, you know, judgment, no judgment. Like you tell me I'm going to try this thing for 30 minutes. I'm just going to say yes. And I'm gonna go oh, it's it. awesome. Um, so we have an analyst on the team. She did a scatter of like a virtual like categories type game. And then um, one of my team members, uh, she did one where you had to, to your like you had to run around your house to find stuff that started with different letters and it reflected like she's a very physically active person and so it was, it's been fun to see like oh like this physically active this person is very detail oriented this person is like you see what their skill sets are in the games that they choose or the things that they enjoy um so it's it, like the one guy did like a video game and and it, it's just been like very like opening of your mind of like I would never I would never do that I didn't even know this video game existed now I want to take it on and kind of do it in other areas so it's been so much discovery for for all of us and that and things that we like oh I would never think to do that and I did like a game of like telephone of like I'm gonna say this and then you gonna draw this and then we're gonna see how it all works out and, and it kind of also shows like y'all this is what happens when we're talking with our product team and like when we're and so it kind of has like little lessons back then of like so here's how when we start and when we finish, it's like this, because this is kind of essentially, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to always tie into work, but it, it's been really fun. I love that. Also, I think the thing, the thing there too, Rosalyn, is those little, those little details that you're learning about each other. Again, that's supposed to, um, sort of empower you to reach out to them for other reasons and bring them into the fold because maybe they're not working on the thing you're exactly working on, but you're like, actually the way they approach things, the idea is hopefully that stuff gets into the back of your mind to actually then reach out for help on actual, like you're saying like, oh, well, like we've always said, like getting help and feeling connected to the people you work with will improve everything else you do. And, so. and I will say like, one of the things that I'm really passionate about is like giving voices, like giving a voice to introverts. And so a lot of the stuff I do is like, because I always feel like introverts don't get that, like, whatever I want them to get or whatever. And so, like, it's like, I want to make sure, like, how do you want to express yourself? I just want to make sure that it doesn't always have to be something that I think is cool because I'm an extrovert. And it's like, it's so important to, like, what do you think is fun, introvert? Because I don't actually know. Um, like, like, what do you think we should be doing? I actually want to understand. And, um... And it's been so much fun to go, oh, this is what that engagement looks like. And then to share that with leadership and go like, I know this person is quiet and you never get to hear them talk because that's not their deal. But like, here's what they're about. And I get to share that throughout and kind of give them that, 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 that I guess platform that they wouldn't normally have because they're not the folks that want to talk a lot. So that's been probably my favorite thing about it. I, I love that. And it reminds me of something I, I 
found when I was doing research for my book, which um, again, some of you may have filled out these surveys, in which case, thank you very much. But one thing I ask people to do is to describe someone that they consider to be a fun person from their life. And it was kind of like, a, I don't even know why I asked that question. It just came up like randomly. And I was like, oh, I'll just ask them this question. But it ended up being really interesting because I asked people what about them made that person fun. And I think the stereotype that we have is that it's all extroverts who are fun. But one of the things, and I know you just said you're an extrovert, Rosalind, but one of the things that came up when people explained why the other person was fun was the idea that the fun person was really good at making other people feel comfortable which is very interesting because that's totally something you're describing right now. I get the sense that you're a fun person based on our calls. But I thought it was really interesting because if you're even if you're not an extrovert, that's something that an introvert can do is like kind of read the room and get a sense and probably might even be better than most extroverts is like knowing how people are feeling emotionally in that room and making them feel comfortable, making them feel involved. Another thing was um, laughing easily, like people who just laugh and kind of go along with things and are always up for anything. So your comment just made me think about that in terms of, if you yourself are feeling kind of shy or introverted and wondering how can you bring positive energy or this kind of like fun into situations, it doesn't always have to be by being the extrovert in the situation. You can do it in other ways as well. Um, Jennifer. Hi there. I'm sorry you guys can't see me again this week. I don't know what's up with my camera. Um, my group actually- good. My, uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. My group, we we actually, we didn't get the chance to, to pick one idea, but there's, I had a handful of ideas that I thought were fun. I mean, I, I like to think about things that build community or focus on what we have in common, like even something like a potluck would be fun. But the main thing that I came away with for this out of my list was maybe something like, and this would work even if you're virtually connected. Um, and this is something that I do with a group of people that I know myself is a monthly singing circle. Um, and it creates fun, you know, release, it creates a sense of community, inclusiveness, and, you know, a, a chance to feel like harmony with each other. Um, I like the idea that it kind of breaks the ice and gives everyone a sense of ownership of the event. And especially when you're thinking in terms of like stodgy work environments. I mean, just like imagine the fun of just kind of getting out of that. I mean, you could even do the singing in a way that relates to, you know, some topic at work and, and kind of make it a playful, silly thing, you know, maybe mocking, you know, TPS reports or, or whatever it is that you're, that you're working on. But I think that could create, like, if you had, for example, a monthly event like that, uh, something that people would be excited about. Um, you know, and it just, it really would get them out of the status quo of the, I mean, the other thing that comes to mind for me about this is that body work, you know, and how important body work can be because it can give you a sense of safety. So if you can also work into that, you know, some movement, you know, like slapping your knees or shaking out your arms or doing whatever, because yeah. I think a lot of times people, you know, are living in these stressful environments or stuck in that fight, flight, freeze. Um, and using that kind of body work can help them feel present and engaged and safe in the environment that they're in. So I think it's a great opportunity to create better work environments or, or just a better life in general, frankly. Yeah, and I think that that that's really interesting. It actually touches on something that JD was just saying in the chat too. That a lot of that we're doing here is about creating situations in which we can be vulnerable and open with each other, creating psychological safety, which I think is really interesting to think about because it's not what you think about when you think fun, right? Like fun does not immediately make you think of vulnerability, but if you really think about who you are or who you're acting when you're having a moment of fun, you're being your true self. You know, you're letting down your guard, you're letting down your walls a bit. And that feels good if you feel safe. So I think all of the exercises that we've done together over the past four weeks are in some ways getting at this point of like, how do we feel comfortable being ourselves? How do we let down our guard a bit? Because that's when connection happens and connection feels really good. Like connection is so important. And I think the more connection we can feel in our everyday lives or in a work context, that's where the fun comes from, right? So it's so ironic that we fight so much against 
seeing and engaging with other people. We're so scared of it. I just was in physical therapy this morning and I heard there's like a luxury apartment building going up next to the office. And it has one of those things where you could take your elevate the elevator straight, straight to your apartment and never interact with another human being. And that's being billed as this like luxury. But in fact, it's a horrible idea. So anyway, the vulnerability idea, Paul, I feel like you were about to say something on that, but I think is a really, really good point of the safety, the emotional safety Absolutely. that we create. One, one, yeah, one of the bigger impacts on kind of realizing what we're doing was um, Amy Edmondson's Fearless, Fearless Organization. And she writes about the necessity of, of psychological safety at, um, at work. And like that she defines it as psychological safety is to feel that you are safe to put your neck out there, <laughs> to share your feelings, your ideas and all of that. And that without that, um, it's pretty devastating at work. Um, the outcomes are, are very, very bad and poor. And uh, she documented hospitals, all these other things where there was a lack of psychological safety. And she talks about it all starts with trust, like you were saying, Catherine, and that fun and play. What we keep talking about oxytocin, it's not coincidental that that's called the trust hormone. It's, it's, that is literally what it's labeled. <laughs> so, um, that is uh, and very intentional. Yeah, if you were like, hey guys, let's be vulnerable at work. Like it's really gonna bring us closer and improve our productivity. <laughs> Can you even imagine? So I think again, it's an interesting little play on things about like approaching it from a different angle, just as Paul and Devin were talking about using the question of what's your superpower or if you could wave, wave, wave a magic wand, how that's a different way of saying, what are your strengths and what are your annoyances at work? It's like coming at these things, fun to me, gives us this other angle to come at these issues in a way that does not make people just like shove you away. You know, it's not gonna be like a trust circle. Like we're not like handing out a box of tissues before the work meeting because we're all gonna be vulnerable together. Maybe we'll do that next month. You know, we can just, <laughs> March can be <laughs> the vulnerability month. Um, we, we could, make, yeah, it's a different right. March madness. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sarah, Sarah, did you have something to say? I'm sorry. I didn't stop talking and I realized you raised your hand. No, I, and then the reason I just took back or lowered my hand was that I just wanted to, to touch upon the same thing as, oh. as you both were speaking, but, but I think, yeah, I was, I had this experience, which I, where I found, which I found really, really amazing was that in a, in an organization, um, we were having a meeting and one of the, people were was lying on the floor on her back sometimes on her on her um on her tummy because she had back problems and 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 it was exactly that kind of trust and that kind of um letting go and being able to show yourself or just being yourself that I felt that she wasn't she wasn't ashamed of her medical conditions or just her, her state but she was able to, I mean she didn't she didn't care and I think that that environment that trustful and playful environment was what enabled her to and not just her but all the others to be themselves totally that there, there was a time when I was pregnant and I went over to a friend's house and my back was hurting and I often think about this how reflected I felt really comfortable with them because I did exactly that I was just lying on the floor in the middle of the dinner so it's interesting to think like, can you kind of go with some of those? I mean, obviously within reason, like don't do anything inappropriate, but like some of those urges to be a bit more playful and just see how people react. Like we've been talking about the experiment. I think that's a good experiment to go forth into March Madness with is like, could you experiment with, with being a little bit more playful and just seeing how anyone reacts to you? I, I had an Uber driver recently who said something about, he was an improver. Paul, I think I told you this story already. Somehow we were talking about improv because I tend to chat with Uber drivers, surprising no one, but he was talking about how you can like tell if someone would be good at improv by like, if someone offers you a stick of gum and you say, what was it? No, I'm scared of good. And then you, I'm sorry, wait, I'm going to give this one. If so, you offer someone a piece of gum, they say no. And you say, what are you scared of gum? Like say something that's basically throwing like a conversational, like opener, like game at them. And if they say something that's playful in response, then you know that you can actually engage with this person in that context he was talking about improv but basically like finding ways to give people playful openings is i think what i'm trying to get at here um, <laughs> seeing if they take it and run with it paul can you be more articulate than me <laughs> well i think i think this is what we all keep talking about is like how do you um look 
that's the whole, and everyone's already put that list of, of icebreakers, right? Like, how do I, how do I do that? But how do I do that? I think the one thing too is that, but how do, what's really interesting about the gum thing is like, how do I do that and stay in the moment? Right? Like, how do I do that and be my true self and like, sort of like, okay, I'm going to reveal a little bit about myself here and it not be um, super staged, you know, and like, that's when the connection happens. And um, so, yeah. Yes. And AC's dropping a story in here in the chat about uh, if you encounter someone in a bad mood and want to cheer them up um, and to do something playful, like asking a grocery store cashier, what apple is their favorite? <laughs> I had a recent thing happen there where, I mean, you guys probably know I'm very into sharing delights and stuff, but on New Year's Eve, I was wearing like a disco ball necklace because I had bought 30 disco ball ne necklaces, which I highly recommend, like get some disco balls, very effective for delight. But the cashier was in a horrible mood. She actually said, if you see me on the news later, don't be surprised. And I was like, oh, okay. But then I said something like, I was like, you seem like you, she said something about the necklace. And I was like, you seem like you need this. And I took off the necklace and gave it to her. And she was like, seriously? And I was like, yes. And she had like total, you know, her face lit up. She started telling me about going to disco parties when she was young. The guy behind us started chatting in line. So um, I think also just finding ways to spread delight can be a really useful way to bring a bit more fun into any encounter in a way that feels safe, but also gets people to let down their guard. I mean, who knows? I might have really <laughs> prevented something from happening that night. I don't know. Anyway, um, we're running up on, on our time here. Does anyone else have anything else they would like to share before we part ways? I'm personally interested in hearing any ideas you guys have um, as some of the most devoted members of the Screen Life Balance community for ways to keep the momentum going within our community and also to like bring more people into the Screen Life Balance community, also to spread the work of Paul and his team. Like they do workshops in companies. So if you're at a company or know a place that could benefit from this, like definitely want to keep in touch there. But I'd be very interested in hearing your thoughts. ACS, are we making a community? Why not? I don't know. Like Yes, it already happened. Already happened. So um, you can share those now, or if you want to, you know, respond to any of my newsletters, it does come to me and Jen. Jen, can you wave? Because you're also behind the scenes here. And she's like a lot of the magic behind Screen Life Balance. So yes. <laughs> um, but if anyone wants to share any last thoughts or anything on that. Just thank you guys so much. This has been way more fun than I ever expected and way more engaging. I'm a person who does not like breakout rooms. I, I thought I did it, um, but like, wow, this has been odd and, and great because um, I, I discovered that if the breakout room is done appropriately, it actually works. And so like among so many other things that I've gotten from this, y'all are just brilliant. And I just appreciate the dedication. Slide deck was amazing every week because it was visually engaging, engaging as well. So just like a note on that, because oh. the visuals have to be kind of on point too with these kind of things and like very little technical issues. So just great work for to y'all um, for for getting a group of folks together and keeping us engaged for four weeks uh, straight. <laughs> so, so thank you guys so much. Well, thank you. And thank you the people on this call also for sticking around. And also like, did you guys know, like people get so scared of breakout rooms, which I totally get, but like way to stay with it and to try them. And uh, I personally, I mean, we weren't in the breakout rooms ourselves, but it's been so cool to see people's reactions to those and given me a lot of ideas of how to actually get people to engage on a Zoom call. So um, yeah. People want the decks. People, people want, want the decks. slide decks. That's, that's, uh, that's in your purview, my friend. I will, I will, I will, Catherine and I will talk about how we disperse some of this. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, all right. Well, thank you all so much. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. everyone. And thank you, Catherine. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Catherine. For yes, well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Just thanks all around. This has been wonderful. I will do my best to actually send out like a real, a, you know, kind of summary of all this. And there were some great links shared. Um, but yeah, all right. Okay, I'm gonna regret very sadly end this Zoom call, but just really, I hope that you all have a wonderful March and that it's not too long before we see each other again. <laughs>